Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of ASP Net Monsters. Uh, this is production code lowercase b, lowercase n. And today we're going to talk a little bit about configuration and how that works. Yeah, so in particular, we're going to talk about how we get the um, the dynamic information that we typically have, especially from environment to environment uh, into our application. A lot of times this can be things like secrets that we don't want to share with our development team, or maybe, you know, in particular, when you're working on an open source project, one of the challenges is, um, you know, you go and you get your codes to integrate with uh, authentication for Twitter or a Microsoft account or whatever the case may be. And you don't want to have that stuff checked in. So you, you want to configure it locally and then you want to add it in. But you might also want to stub out the placeholders and have objects that can actually load um, these pieces of information in. And so there's this whole kind of... The, 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 only option we really had before um, was either sharing those values uh, amongst our team or having some kind of exclude set up but then sharing the the configuration values via email or something like that and then setting it up in environment variables uh, which is kind of a, a pain in the butt there's a whole new configuration system in ASP.NET 5 and there's a lot of really good things going on now we talked about this during the startup um, the introduction to the startup.cs. And what we've got here, there's just really, after they knew up this builder object, again, this is just the default template, although I've added in another example that we'll dig into in another video. But really what's going on here is we create a new configuration builder and then we start loading things in. So we load in this JSON file, this app settings.json. Uh, there's also this optional addition that is per environment. So were I going to staging or to production or any name that I come up with, it's going to try to load that file in as well. And it says optional true. So if it doesn't exist, that's okay. Now this is just the, a naming convention that they've chosen, but um, you can pick whatever you like. And in fact, the startup class itself, if you want to use a different startup class, like for example, I'll just kind of give you a reason why you might want to. Right here, we've got this basically a switch that says it checks to see is this the development environment and then it'll do you know it'll add user secrets again lots of stuff lots of new surface area here user secrets is one of those things where we could protect those things like twitter credentials but rather than doing this is development check and adding the user secrets in here i could actually have a startup development startup staging startup production and by convention it will actually use the environment name and use that class to start my application up so no magic going on there it's just a convention but it works really well this here as well is just something that they've set up by default but you can override it if you want to you don't have that same luxury with the naming of your startup class if we don't want to do different startup classes for each of our environments, we use the one startup class and we build out our configuration um, just right here. And in terms of adding those configuration values, th this is kind of what that looks like. So in this case, adds them successively, adds them in a way that overrides or overwrites both, I, I guess, work. Um, what was previously there. So if you had a value in app settings, for example, the name of your site, and then you had a user secret set that had the same name, the name of your site, that would be overridden. And then if you finally had an environment variable that was the name of your site, that would in succession be written in, uh, read in last and overwrite any previous values. So that's something to be aware of. It's also very powerful because it means you can be using user secrets locally and then the environment variables get loaded up if you're hosting in the cloud, for example, and you're using um, uh, site deployment in uh, you know, the, one of the web apps or whatever in Azure. So this is kind of like the way that we set up the, the pipeline, right? That we, we kind of add things in succession and things that are added later override things that were added previously. Absolutely. So the order that you do it in, if it, if it works better for flow um, to add your environment variables first or your user secrets first, that's totally up to you um, and, and how you want to load that out. One of the neat things about the uh, JSON file, the ability to add via JSON files, it's just very clean. It's, you know, JSON notation. So your uh, data can be, there can be a 
you know, some structure to it, a hierarchy of properties. And then these actually, if you look at the startup file in where we start configuring our, our middleware, there's some interesting things going on here. For example, we've got these helpers that allow us to pull those values directly out of whatever has been loaded into our, um, into our application settings already. So anything that we've loaded as an option, we can actually now, um, or sorry, loaded as configuration data, we can pull it out of that collection. And it also allows us to do more interesting things, which we'll look at in another uh, video, such as loading a section and hydrating that into an object. So there's some really cool things that you can do with that, um, with that configuration system. Um, in, in a nutshell, th that's kind of how we, how we put the, those pieces together. One other thing worth noting and I'll just go into my, uh, where's my properties here? This is the guy right here that dictates what our environment is. So if we want to add or change or set the name of the environment that we're in, we simply set it to be the hosting colon environment, and that will let the system know which environment we're in. Now that's been changing. That's just an environmental variable, right? So if That's I'm right. not using Visual Studio to divide development, I can just set it up as an environmental variable. That's right. So for cross-plat stuff, then it makes it very accessible for someone building on Linux or, um, you know, whatever to, to put their own environment variable in and use that instead. Now, this has been changing. I think, uh, uh, Dave, you'd, you'd seen something uh, change here. Yeah, it used to be ASP.NET ENV is the name of the variable. Right. So this is still feels like moving parts, maybe? A little. It seems to be settling, at least, on this side. So this is, uh, I guess, just noting here the version that we're on right now is RC1-Final. Um, there might be an RC1-Final, no really, uh, release yet. We're not sure. <laughs> we'll watch for that. But as it stands right now, this is where you would actually go and set the name of the environment you're at. So then they've got helpers in here for things like is, like env is development is staging or you can actually do an is uh, environment and then pass it in the name of a string so my server or my environment or whatever the case may be and i believe that is it yeah but where's my web config ah your web config is no more your web config is no more actually we still need a web config in certain conditions for example if we're hosting in azure and our host is um, uh, IIS, then we can still use a web fig to load uh, right. modules and things like that. But that's not where we'd put things like our connection strings and app settings. That's right. That would all be in these configuration settings here. So we've got the app settings.json, and this actually replaces that app settings section of our web config file. So you can think of it like that. That's nice. This is a lot. looks like it's a lot easier to manage than doing web config transforms and all those other ways of handling this that we had in the past. Exactly, and it's not going to balloon on us like the way that web config has previously as well, right? Like this is just my settings. It's not the web config which has, you know, server and, and host settings and runtime settings and modules that are being loaded. This is just the data that I have that can change from environment to environment. That's great. I think that's really useful. Cool. So I think that's everything for this episode. D Dave, has anybody uh, won our contest yet? No, it doesn't look like it. S still trying, okay. still trying. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Great. Well, thanks, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode of ASP.NET Monsters. Cheers. We can call this an edit point we'll and then wait. come back. <laughs> no, we should show people that sometimes things take a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes they they go Ari on us too here. So, huh. okay, so this, and that one, that one seems to be locked up. Oh, oh, there it oh. goes. So there it is. <laughs> After one point six seven seconds. <laughs> okay, let's do that again.